It's been one week since you lifted me. Cocked your head to the side and said I'm angry. The, the Bare Naked Lady song, that was just a line of dialogue that I had thrown in from Nandor in one of the early drafts. And then the more that we rewrote it, like it just became sort of like a bigger joke. And then eventually was like, yeah, well, we should just get the song and do it. It's been one week since you looked at me. Cocked your head to the side and said I'm angry. Five days since you left at me. I know the whole fucking song. I'd say that was pretty gosh darn human, wouldn't you? You've been brainwashed. We all had it stuck in our head for the season. <laughs> after, after. Yeah, especially poor k man who had to actually memorize all those lyrics. There's a lot of syllables in that song um, and not always where you expect them to be. Hi, this is Kay Van Nova. I play Nando the Relentless in What We Do in the Shadows. This is Stephanie Robinson, writer and executive producer. Hi, I'm Yana Gorskaya. I'm the director, editor, co-executive producer of What We Do in the Shadows. Need I say more? Yes. You're watching Varieties Making a Scene. The Wellness Center episode is important because it's the episode in which Nando decides that he doesn't want to be a vampire anymore. Enough is enough. He's going to be a human again, somehow. It's an amalgamation of moments that um, that sort of make up Nandor's new life. He's joined this cult. He doesn't really realize that it is a cult. And so you're basically just seeing him completely indoctrinated in this cult of vampires. Specifically, you're sort of obsessed with this idea of reclaiming their humanity and sort of forsaking their vampiredom. A lot of those beats were scripted, but then she and I went off and brainstormed other ideas um, for ways in which vampires might be trying to be human, especially after we found that location. And like, we saw that amazing kitchen and we're like, they could, they could cook. Like, <laughs> what would they be cooking? Just miles of broccoli, of course. More broccoli. I forgot how exciting it was to live like a human. I was actually, you know, I, I put some thought into that. I was like, well, Nando doesn't really cook. So I just kind of went with like how a kid chops something or pretends to chop something. I guess, I, you know, when in doubt, I just kind of take him back to like being five years old. Because physically that always kind of works. I think a lot of physical comedy is kind of how a toddler would move and how a toddler would do something. The day was insane. We shot almost all of this in one day in that location. So we were running from place to place and k was changing costumes and being an absolute rock star with his energy. Um, and we would shoot just enough until we thought we nailed it and then run to the next thing um, because it was ambitious to say the least. We also were dealing with COVID when you were shooting this at the time, this was pre-vaccines. And um, it was still, it was you know very scary, weird time. And this was still like, we were one of the first productions in that season to I think go back to, to shooting to shooting a show. One of the COVID rules was that actors were not allowed to sing within a 10 foot radius of each other. So it became a really strange thing where some people had to lip sync, we had to stage people like farther apart. We couldn't have as many extras in that scene. I think maybe only Cree Summer and um, K-Van could actually do the singing, but in a very specific way. So it was, it ended up being a weirder, harder thing to maneuver around. Very challenging because it was so ambitious, but also such a joy to make. I mean, I think that's one of the things that happened when we were shooting, particularly the jam session is because all of us had been in lockdown. It felt like the first party that any of us had been to in many months. Who knew that living as a human would reignite the zeal for life I thought to be long dormant? We talked a lot about what this cult looked like for a while. They were more like yoga vampires and it was more hippy dippy. Laura Montgomery, our costume designer, was actually showing us costumes for uh, the background dancers in the routine. And they, they had these kind of 80s style unitards and they were so funny and we all kind of hooked into that and stephanie took a whole 
new pass at the script to work in all of these 80s references. It just felt more exciting and I think funnier to just have this vampire sort of stuck in the 1980s. And that sort of felt like it was more fun visually and something we hadn't necessarily seen before on the show. Kate Bunch, our production designer, came up with this sun design to play into the theme of them wanting to be human and enjoying things that were human and that they maybe otherwise couldn't experience. It was Shane and Kate Bunch and their art department is incredible. All of the sets on the show, they really are some of the most intricate, detailed, complex sets I think I've ever stepped onto in my entire life. Like they do kind of rival like Disneyland level ambiance. But for the wellness episode, In particular, we were looking for something that felt the opposite of what we had been doing for most of the show. We were looking for something that did not feel vampiric at all. It was like we wanted fluorescent lights. We wanted uh, gross floors and um, really bright colors. And you just kind of wanted to be reminded of middle school (laughs) a little bit. I watched a lot of 80s movies in in preparation for directing the wellness center but the one that i think was most influential to my thinking uh was this movie perfect where jamie lee curtis is an aerobics instructor and there is an extended three minute scene of um aerobics which is almost entirely hip thrusting (laughs) and so i actually sent that to our choreographer amy wright um and said please This needs to be like the key thing that they do is just hip thrusting because (laughs) it's so ridiculous. Jane is just so alive and electric. She has changed my life. Well, the wig was the creation of our wonderful hair designer, Tamara Harrod. That was actually like a prototype that we weren't going to shoot with, but it was so good and it looked so amazing and like K-Van's real hair that we we went with it. I'm kind of used to Nandor being all kind of bouffanty and puffy around the ears and suddenly I've got this short kind of John Travolta style wig and you know I felt like wow I'm really you know Nando's really changed because he's usually wearing four layers you know leather jackets and capes and stuff so you feel kind of quite protected but then when he wears something you know like a pair of skimpy shorts and you know a little crop top you feel more vulnerable but then he is in a vulnerable place so that kind of it helps yes Nandy yes It seems to me that this Uncle Sam is bleeding us dry. Maybe we should bleed him! No, 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 no. We blow off steam with an IPA or maybe an evening bike ride. Cree, this was actually the first thing we shot on that day. And I knew Cree was wonderful, but I didn't know if she could improv. And she went to town on these lessons. You could see k kind of light up because he knew he had a playmate. And like, he just lobbed back any ball that she threw and vice versa. And like the rest of the day, they were both on fire. Jane has taught me so much. This is especially important for the women when you're an expert about something and a man is explaining it to you. Strained eyes but really big smile. During the montage where she's taught, like she's describing like to women how to smile correctly. And like, she's talking about, here's how you smile as a woman. That was all her. So she was just really jumping in there um, and playing. She's brilliant. She's a brilliant comedian. She's a brilliant actor. She's uh, she's a brilliant performer. And she really, I, I don't think the episode would have been the same if it wasn't for her. When it came time to actually finish this episode, and we were editing and and it was coming in long because it's off, obviously very packed. And one of the things that was floated as a potential lift was her run about smiling. And um, Stephanie and I lobbied very hard to keep it. <laughs> I think because we've both been there. Working with Cree, you know, I knew her from so many things from my childhood. I knew her from a different world. So, you know, she's kind of Hollywood royalty. It was so easy to just follow, you know. She's the Pied Piper and I was just like following her lead. It felt good to kind of relinquish power to her because she is a powerful presence anyway. Because we are forbidden to use our vampiric powers or strength in any way, life is constantly surprising me. I mean, the Wellness Center was a really key episode for us in season three because it was just a huge part of Nandor's journey, which was 
very central to our plot in in season three and it was really the moment like the culmination of all of the angst that he'd been feeling he really wanted this to be the answer but he knew in his heart that it wasn't the answer and i think you know a lot of the time in real life you want a quick fix you want you know a magic bullet you want to do one thing and for that to be the the cure for all your ills and it it rarely is that, or it is for about two weeks and then you run out of steam and you kind of back to square one and you wonder why. Um, and then you realize it's not external, it's internal. This is a tough like balancing act because we're a comedy and we um, are committed to being a comedy and not being maudlin. Um, but oftentimes when things are deeply felt, they're funnier. I guess balancing the kind of seriousness and playfulness for me was it was all there really on the page i feel like jokes are kind of meaningless if there's no drama or emotional sort of turmoil underneath even even if the emotional turmoil is something stupid and very sort of flippant for me the emotion is necessary and then sort of making fun of the emotion it's sort of like i don't know it's like a i'm doing like a putting ornaments on a Christmas tree vibe there. Like if the, the, like, you know, the base of the Christmas tree is there where it is something emotional and real and dramatic, then like the ornaments are all the jokes and the funny. Stephanie just captured it so perfectly in this script, in this bonkers script. This one, yeah, was turned up to 11, that's for sure. I have lost 123 straight games of cornhole and I have never felt more alive. I, I learned in making this to push hard for the idiotic um, and that it paid off and that it actually, you know, being smartly stupid takes a lot of preparation and, you know, you can't do roller skating if you don't have roller skates. And so, you know, having all of these conversations of all of the dumb things that we'll need, like a hundred pounds of broccoli um, and having them at the ready and designed, like there was so much detail work that actually went into making something that feels stupid <laughs> in the best way. <laughs> <laughs>